Just waiting for Adrian and Hi. Vera and Adrian work from home. Hello. Um, yeah, for the last time uh, before the summer break. Yes, we will not be live through the month of August. Why? Because other things have to happen. Mm -hmm. That's going to be live somewhere else. Sorry, guys. Vera is busy, basically. <laughs> But for this evening, we're going to have another 45 minutes of chat. Yeah. Um, we're going to do a great old what have we learned so far episode. Indeed. Have um, we learned anything? I think that's the first question. <laughs> do we remember anything? Oh, my. <clears throat> sorry, my throat. Do we remember anything? Have we learned anything? And what? Yes. Uh, so for those of you who are new to us, we will be just chatting for a few minutes and then we'll go into the topic of the week mm -hmm. and then at eight o'clock we will answer your questions so if you are logged on to youtube you can chat to us and send us questions about the world about physics mm -hmm. about anything you like ask us anything and then we will look at those questions at eight chat about that and then we'll see how we go and wrap up by eight fifteen. Indeed. Um, what content warnings um, should we? I think we will talk about race. We will talk about inequality. Uh, I'm. Sh we might. Let's try. I'll try not to swear. Okay. <laughs> we yeah. might talk about bodily things. Yes, including um, bodies and uh, diet culture and fat phobia. Yes. I think um, that's about it. Illness, we might cut, we might talk about illness. Bodies, illness, race, identity stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I think that's, yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, okay, cool. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, yes, because this is live, you know, who knows where we'll go, but from memory, that's the kind of stuff that we covered yeah. over the last few months. And so that's what we'll be summing up in some way yeah. uh, and maybe going deeper. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Wow, that's exciting. Okay. Right, so conversational starter. Yeah, well, let's check in quickly. How are you doing? Oh, I am... I'm a little bit out of sorts. It feels like the year is over. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not even August, but I suppose I always think mm -hmm. August people are on holiday and then after yes. August it's autumn, which pretty much means it's Christmas and, <laughs> you know. You're already looking ahead to the end of the year. I don't, maybe, yes. I don't know if that's the right phrase, looking ahead. I'm not sure I'm looking forward to the end of the year because I would like to sort of enjoy more of this year or enjoy yeah. this year more um but it's a funny old year yes it is it is um i mean to be honest i'm really nervous about tomorrow because tomorrow we are doing a couple of run-throughs of a show that i'm in mm, and okay. i'm just a little bit scared which is very unlike me really you don't feel like that normally in the day i don't feel a new show Scared. I feel nervous and there's adrenaline and that there's you know those feelings okay. and excitement but I'm a little bit scared <laughs> oh no okay I see how are you doing today 
Yeah, fine. Um, a little bit spaced out, but um, I don't know if maybe I haven't drunk enough water. I've been like gulping down water in the last hour or so, mm -hmm. um, which maybe wasn't a good tactic. But um, no, I'm feeling I'm feeling okay. I'm fine. Okay, just be aware, all of you out there in the UK. I think Friday is meant to be like 31, 32 degrees. Yes. So please drink Definitely that water. Definitely preparing for the heat wave over the next two days. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I gave all my plants lots of water today in preparation. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm scared for the plants, to be honest. Yeah. I'm, I mean, they'll either make it or they won't. That's. <laughs> I, do. Yes, okay, that's fine. Give them a bit of water and a lot of love and let them get on with it. It's Darwin, baby. What, what baby? It's Darwin. Uh, Shall I um, give you a conversation? A simplification prompt? of Darwinian theory, but yeah, sure. Super simplification. <laughs> okay. Um, Shall I give you a conversational prompt? Please. How do you feel about talking to strangers? This is conversational prompt number 12. I am, it depends. Depends on who started talking first. Oh, good point. Oh my God. I had a really intense conversation with a man in the park the other day. And yeah. I have a history of um, attracting older men, not necessarily in a sexual or romantic way, but um, I think I give off the vibe that I'm a good listener and that I care mm. about their lives. And so, um, which I do, I do care, yeah. but there is a limit. Yes. Um, and he told, it was the second time I'd met him and he told me something really rather disturbing that had happened to him as a child. Oh, wow, okay. And then um, I was like, oh, you know, do you, is this the time you come to the park every day? Um, and I guess I thought I would see him again, but I haven't seen him again and he's moving away uh, okay. next month. So I worry that he's thinking that he's told me something intimate and I never want to see him again, um, which isn't 100% untrue. Right. I mean, yeah, you, it feels like you're already not quite strangers with this person because he's no. shared quite a lot and you already feel quite invested. Yes, and I really just want him to be happy and, and mm. you know, good. He's got a lovely dog. Okay, oh, so you've met dog to dog as well. Yes, dog to dog. I think mm. uh, dogs are a conversation starter for sure. Yes, yeah, yes. that makes sense. Um, today I was uh, in Essex and I felt very naked without my dog because, mm. um, yes, there are lots of people. Oh, actually, we should say you were in Leon C. Yes. My mum's watching. She would be excited. Oh, yes. I was in Leon C and, um, and I felt really naked without my dog because normally that's what I would talk about use to talk about or people uh -huh. would approach me and be friendly or or they would go oh, okay she's she's a she's a decent human being she's got a dog right if the dog loves her she must be okay yes Which I mean, is not a reliable like, metric by the way in case anyone is no because some people are dog walkers strangers. plus dogs i mean they just they just they, love you they love you for their own reasons you don't have to be a good person um okay <laughs> I am a good person. I know you are. I'm just <laughs> saying. Um, it's not a it's good not, metric. Yeah, it's not foolproof. Mm. Although, I mean, happy, healthy dog is the sign that probably they're being looked after well. So that might be, that is, that is something. Yeah, yes. I have a, a dog with a very bad haircut because I trimmed his hair. Oh, you did it yourself? <clears throat> oh. Uh, just his fringe and his okay. nose. So there's like a little hole right there. Oh. <laughs> well, if he insists on wriggling. Yes, I mean, I guess that's why, you know, it's it's not everyone who can do that. No, dog but the dog. trick is, if you're <laughs> trying to groom your dog at home, the trick is to put it on a table. Okay. Apparently, because it makes them more sort of like, oh, I'm Something not- Something unusual is happening. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
big mystery. Yeah, that's like, okay, good to know. And you can also get those plastic, um, a lick mat is what they call them. And then you put peanut butter. And okay. so the dog just licks it and is occupied. Oh, I see. Why oh, do you do things to it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And then, or oh, because I always assumed you just train to be as quick as possible. You put them down and then just like as fast as you can <laughs> so that they don't, so they don't get bored. I mean, some dogs are just trained very well, aren't they? Mm, and they yeah, just yeah. sit there. You know, those dogs that you see on YouTube where they've got a bit of food on their nose. Yeah, and they don't do anything And they don't it. do anything because they're mm. just brain I've never met any of those dogs in real No, life. I have not met those dogs either. <laughs> right, so now it is 22. So what have we learned? Mm. Have we learned anything? Yeah, what do we remember? Have we learned anything? What was it? What do we remember? Um, I remember talking to Philly about uh, opera. Yes. And she taught me uh, about um, pineapples, the connection between pineapples and London. You taught me about, I think you taught me about the connections between pineapples and Chinese New Year. Chinese what? people. With well, Chinese people, yes. I think you said there were lots of pineapples around at Chinese New Year, did you? Yes. Okay, or maybe I subsequently read about that. Anyway, um, then I was in Maida Vale mm -hmm. uh, and there was a gate post with pineapples on it. Yes. And I don't think I would have noticed that normally. I mean, I've been down that road before and yeah, it was very exciting. I was like, oh yeah, it really does. It exists. There are, there are pineapples here. Mm -hmm, Obviously mm -hmm. it is a London thing. It doesn't take much to convince me that something is true. Well, yeah. I think Philly sent me a message, um, Philippa Boyle, opera soprano. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. She did send me some information about pineapples after the episode she was on, and uh, I did not pass it on to you. Oh, I think she sent that to me as well. Separately. Oh, great. Okay, yes, well. I did read that. It um, was too late to post it under the video, but it was essentially the same information that I that I found somewhere else. It was It was around the fact that pineapples used to be extremely expensive. Yes. Each individual pineapple. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, they and take two like, years to grow even still now. So two years. Yeah. Each two pineapple. Years, each pineapple. And you only get one pineapple per plant. Why are they not more expensive? I guess they just, they're, they're I don't know. I, I have to learn how to say, I don't know, because I always want to give a guess. But I, I would imagine it's because they're, you know, people have cleared big areas to grow pineapple plants in I don't yeah it's a good question though yes because you know what I mean like it's taking up a lot of uh surface area mm, yeah but it's not growing um vertically so it's not yielding a lot of fruit no well no I mean it yeah from what I from what I've heard it yields one pineapple per plant every two years I mean that's it's not a good return no um, uh, so I would be interested in hearing from pineapple experts out yes. there. Did that you learn anything about opera? Did I learn anything about opera? Um, I'm not sure I learned anything. Did I learn anything? I'm not sure I remember if I learned anything about... What did you learn about opera? Oh, I didn't learn anything. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that that I enjoyed having that conversation. Um, I suppose I did learn... No, but I already kind of knew that the process of making an opera was very different from the process of making, say, devised theatre, which is what I do. Yes. So I knew <clears> that already, but it was interesting to have Biddy confirm that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what do you remember? I remember, I still, I'm still thinking about last week's episode, not to cheat, mm -hmm. um, about, we were talking about diet culture and sort of the subjectivity behind the concepts of health and right. um, health and and what's yeah that even that is already quite a big thing right mm -hmm. sort of yes um and because i was i was eating today as i do every day and i wasn't sure what to do about how much more food I wanted to put into my into myself because I'm like is it because it's tasty am I allowed to mm -hmm. is it healthy 
Um, does that matter? And these are very huge questions I don't know how to answer. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, know, know that we, I, I yeah. don't, because uh, in the last few days, the government has announced some kind of new anti-obesity strategy. I think that's oh, what God. they're calling it that. Um, and I don't think that's at all helpful. It doesn't help you answer any of those questions. No, because obesity is based on BMI calculations and that that's mm -hmm. really sort of like, for example, I had a that's personal trainer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a personal trainer uh, a few years ago and he was cl um, classified as obese because he was really big, but yeah. it was all muscle. Yeah. I mean, it was unhel an unhealthy amount of muscle. He was getting um, sleep apnea from the weight. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, technically obese. So I think it's yeah, very, it's very... very it dodgy. sounds like BMI is not a very useful metric at all. No. Um, but yeah, anyway, all of that stuff is very, uh, it's, it's depressing to be constantly seeing people repeating the same very judgmental stuff around eating and bodies. Um, when there's a lot of, there is a lot of writing out there discussing how unhelpful that is. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, how it, anyway, yeah, we talked about that last week. Okay, so what did you, so you remember that? What did you learn? Did you learn anything? You're allowed to say no. You don't have to learn. <laughs> I, I feel like You're I'm here still... to learn, Vera. <clears throat> no, but oh, see, my, my throat's going as well. I feel as though I'm still processing because we've talked a lot about identity mm -hmm. and sort of inequality. And it's everything is related, it seems, sort of, you know, concepts that several groups or dominant groups have kind of put across that we have to follow. Mm -hmm. Um, so even body mass index, that's based on, I imagine, uh, a white man. Mm -hmm. Right. The idea of what the norm would be. Right. And mm, if yes. you're from different parts of the world or yeah. Yeah, different ethnicities, your body shape is completely different. Right. And so what's the average of that? Mm. So... I was wondering about the how similar it might be to sort of like in terms of language to go, oh, if we remove the word fat, mm -hmm. would we be able to, would, would something else replace it? Right. Like if we stopped using the words male and female, for example. Yeah. What, what would happen? Yeah. Um, Yes, because yeah. I've been t talking to a lot of um, w working with people from a different part of the country, mm -hmm. the island, the isle, the Great British Isles. And um, there's a lot of language I've noticed, uh, you know, around sort of madness or it's something is mental or mad. And I'm like, oh, OK, yeah, how I, f I don't know how I feel about that. Mm. Yeah, that feels like, I mean, that reminds me of, I don't know, that feels very familiar to me to describe something, uh, something as mental when you want to say it's great or it was exciting or, or surprising hectic. or strange. Yes. Yeah. Um. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, what's the word for that uh, kind of language? A lot of um, judgmental pejorative language that finds its way into the language, into the like common um ways of speaking um which is yeah i think it's i think it's really interesting to kind of to to flag that up in i find it quite interesting to flag that up in myself and then think about what alternatives i could use because sometimes it feels I, either it's familiar or it feels very meaningful to me um because i've been using a word in a particular way for so long mm -hmm. um, and it's yeah it's interesting to think about well who could be hurt by that um and what could i do then yeah to change uh, because oh i mean I, yeah, I use i use especially words around um mental health pejorative words around mental health i use quite a lot yes um, yeah, i need to think about that 
Yeah. Yeah. I still use crazy. Oh, that's crazy. Mm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Me but too. okay. So Alice in Wonderland. Everything is queer. Oh, how queer! Right. right. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I it is true. Because, as true in true in the sense of what? In what do you mean? I suppose how I use the word queer now is to mean not heteronormative. Okay, right. I.e., not the status quo. Uh huh. Right. So if you're like, oh, look, a disappearing cat, that's queer. <laughs> it's neither, you know, I don't know. But it's obviously not the same meaning as the politicized queer. Mm. Now. Yes. Um, Although I think, I mean, I've, I've a th I can't quite dredge this up, but I have a feeling I've read, uh, I've read things where the, the meaning was definitely, it was crossing over or it had, it had that, um, it had that aspect of either gay or trans or non-normative. Mm -hmm. um, like at a time when you could say queer and people would understand it to mean strange, but what you actually mean is um, queer, more like we would use queer nowadays. I think that's super interesting when that kind of that moment comes. Um, I quite like that. My grandmother used to, used to use the word gay. Um, she would say, I remember her saying she'd been to London and she had a gay time. Yeah. Um, and I used to kind of smile inside. Um, but you don't, yeah, you hardly ever hear that anymore, I think. Mm. Just to mean kind of happy, uh, carefree. Um, What's anyway. a gay lord? A gay lord? Oh, that was a term that was used a lot when I was probably like, like between like, you know, around the ages of 10, 11, 12, something like that. Uh, people used to call each other gay lords. But it was just a, an, an insult. But there's, a, there's, for example, an Indian restaurant somewhere I know called the Gay Lord. So it must oh, be okay. um, something. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I just know it is as a, as a, as a insult, word right. to insult somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Okay. I'll have to look that up then. What else have, do you remember from our season? Okay, from our whew, 14, this is the 14th, I think. This I don't even remember how many episodes we've done, but it seems to have gone by very quickly. Like time has yeah. definitely taken on a very different uh, texture. I remember talking about Pretty Little Liars. Mm -hmm. that, was a big, that was a big episode for me. Um, I've since finished watching Pretty Little Liars and was kind of equal parts disgusted and amused um, by the way the story played out. Um, uh, what else do I remember? I remember we talked to, um, who else have we talked to? We've we talked, talked to, to Vic, friend. we've talked to Michelle. Michelle, that's right. I was thinking about Michelle, um, who was talking about all of the cooking that she does in that amazing um, place where she's living. Um, yeah, she's in Wiltshire somewhere. Right, I didn't remember where, Wiltshire, yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to say something that she told me, but I don't think I, sh I don't think I, it's public not, it's, I don't think it's for me to share. Okay. But uh, she did remind, she was showing me her uh, contraption she built before we did the episode to grow bean sprouts. Oh yeah. Because in, when we were growing up, our mums would, um, I mean, we grew up separately and strangely, our mothers know each other. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. I don't think and, you told us that. No, no, no. I completely forgot. Um, That's so they, cool. Yes, they met independently of us. Wow. What are the chances? Yeah. And uh, the way you prepare bean sprouts uh, for a Chinese dish, you need to pluck off the, the, the root okay. and the head. Like, so you just have the translucent white stalk right, right. Mm -hmm. and so you have like a pure taste and so instead of sitting and like plucking all the bits Michelle's husband whose name I can't remember quite right now um built a contraption where the roots grow downwards and then you just slice of all the roots in one go brilliant mm. and that reminded me of another very ingenious uh person I know, Jean Voon, who is currently in Kuching, Borneo, and she's in quarantine. 
So in Malaysia, if you fly in, you have to be in quarantine, but they quarantine you in a separate building. You can't just go home and self-isolate. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's just growing sprouts in her hotel room. Oh, really? And like eating them. I mean, she can. She has access to other food. She's not mm. just like surviving on sprouts. But I think it's so cool yeah. that we don't need to go to like fancy restaurants to get mm. nutrients or fresh food or, or you know we don't need to go to organic um shops and things mm. oh i uh so why did i come across this i was reading about this guy and i'll try and find the what I, the article i was reading for um for the notes about this guy in who lived in south london no croydon um who sent seeds all over the world uh, oh, it's because it was by a Ruby Tando because so I was looking for links for Ruby Tando links last week and she had tweeted about this. She'd written an essay about this guy and she was retweeting it. Um, I'll send a link to that. It, it was a super exciting story. Uh, and basically he was talking about, well, they were in, you know, the, the story was about how um, commercial agriculture relies on seeds that uh, only produce one season of fruit. Um, they're basically sterile. So you have to keep buying the seeds year on year. Uh, so companies like Monsanto, they spend a lot of time um, producing seeds that, that make varieties that are strong and tasty or whatever it is that people want, but um, they don't then reproduce. There's, you can't then plant the seeds that are, either the seeds aren't made or you can't plant them. Mm -hmm. um, and so he's been sourcing and growing and sending out and rescuing basically all kinds of um, plants, um, food plants, so vegetables, fruit, uh, that he grows and then um, and then you know and then harvest the seeds and then sends them all over the place. It's a really beautiful story. I mean, sad because he he died last year um, or early this year. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I think lots and lots of people are growing seeds that he uh, whatever. I don't know what the word is. Um, there is a word. Husbanded. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, it's a beautiful story. Husband. And he was a big proponent of that. He said, even if you've just got a tiny amount of space, you yeah. can make a garden and grow plants. Yes. I'm not sure that husbanded is the right word. Okay, <laughs> I don't know then. Because hus animal husbandry is about breeding animals, but he's yeah. rescuing. But he was breeding, he was basically breeding plants. Right. Growing them and then so. harvesting the seeds and then sending the seeds all over the place. Yes. So you know there are seed banks in the world? Yes, I'd heard about the one up in the north. Svalbard. Svalbard. Is that on Svalbard? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had read about it. Yes. So are there other ones? Seed banks are depositories where I think as, as, as many varieties as possible of seeds mm -hmm. are kept but you see seeds are really quite delicate yes they need yeah. to be like the right temperature right humidity mm. um so i wonder if if the world does get decimated right Whether they how, be usable. Yeah. yeah like who exactly is going to use these seeds yeah who will have access to them yes i, I imagine there's security Mm. Yes. Um, but if you're in the Hackney area, um, there's a woman who whose tag is Hackney Herbal, and she teaches you how to um, to preserve seeds because yes, okay. they kind of go off as yes. well. Yes, I think I'd read that in Svalbard they do have to keep renewing their collections. Right. Because there's yeah, there's a time limit even if you freeze the seeds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, that's super interesting. Because I mean, yeah, the, um, it's not as simple as just put something in the ground and it'll. No, you do as have, I have oh, found out. Bit, yeah. Right. Um, I mean, I'm so I'm quite impressed. In in my little rooftop garden, um, I had a, a runner bean plant that succumbed to black fly, and I just left it. I was like, okay, let them feast. Um, and it's it's had a new like lease of life and it started and it's got flowers now. So maybe eventually I will have runner beans, but I have no 
knowledge of how to look after any of these plants and I don't know yeah I don't know how many are going to survive We'll Which see. one is the runner bean? Is that the long, thin one? Yes, yeah, I think it's long, thin and green. So it's, what's a French bean? I think, I was just thinking, I think a French bean is darker in colour. I'm not sure though. It's okay. a long time since I've spent a lot of time thinking about beans. I don't <laughs> usually buy beans. I mean, they come into season so briefly. And um, when, when, you know, when I lived with my parents my mum always grew beans so we would always have beans from the garden oh wow in the season which are amazing yes so I don't tend to buy beans and they're always I mean beans uh in the supermarket seem to come a long way to arrive at us they're very rarely do I see local beans so I'm always a bit like oh I don't know environmental impact should I be buying them so I don't don't you get odd box sent to you? I do now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the last couple of months, I've been subscribing to odd box. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, I love that. Um, have you ever had odd box? I, uh, my ex housemate used to get odd box deliveries. Okay. Um, and you gave me a book called Defective Carrots many years ago. Oh, I remember that. That came from an exhibition that I saw in Exeter. Yes, and the premise mm -hmm. of that exhibition was. It was all carrots, wasn't it? I wasn't there. All carrots, yes. Yes, and the point was that a lot of uh, produce is destroyed because it's not yeah. uniform. It's not pretty enough. In France, they have this phrase, um, I don't know which company it, is, company it is that started doing this, but fruit moche, which means ugly fruit, because a lot of fruit is just rejected because it doesn't look good mm -hmm. to consumers. I mean, like yellow broccoli that's yellowing is perfectly edible. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. 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 And those carrots, some of them were so like they had amazing shapes, didn't they? Yes. And some were like just very ordinary carrots, but <laughs> rejected. Well, yeah. Some of them like you just need it just needs to have a, a slit in it. You know, sometimes they kind of open up a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, we're not going to buy that. I mean, I see some yeah. of those in Sainsbury's, but um, yeah, people want perfection. Perfection. Um, yeah, I find it quite interesting. So I get this odd box and it's a it's a mixture of fruit. I don't know what's coming every week. You can look it up if you want, but I quite like the surprise. Yeah. It's delivered overnight between Sunday night and Monday morning where I live. And so on Monday morning, I bring them the box and open it up and find out what I've been sent. And they also send a little sheet with it that tells you why the fruit and veg that you've got has been rejected. Oh. And that's it's really interesting. Like sometimes it's about size. Sometimes it's about, because, well, recently it's been because of surplus a lot of the time. Uh, sometimes it's just skin markings surplus yeah because of the because of um the hospitality industry hasn't been oh, yes. running for yes. a few months so lots of stuff was being grown that then lost its buyers um, do you know about too good to go no i haven't heard of that it is I think initially it was just like it's main i think it's an app but also a website where you can um instead of throwing out food uh retailers can just go hey they're on discount now okay you know, and yeah. so you can just search by location but That's during good. lockdown i noticed that grocery stores were doing boxes as well so like right you know like literally the little grocery store um half a mile away would go here we'll give you a box of vegetables and it'll be two pounds amazing yeah yeah so it's really mm -hmm. useful. Um, That's very it, useful. Yeah, it is yeah, eight o'clock. I'm just going to ask you some questions. I feel like we didn't remember or learn very much from our 14 minutes. Well, we can still remember things in the next few minutes. That's true. Um, yeah. You oh, no questions. Me. What's that? There's no questions. Lots of instructions. Um, yeah, Adrian, I know. don't so, water yeah. your mushrooms too much. I think that actually comes from my mother, although it's um, under my father's name. I think my mum, uh, she's, she's the one who sent me this box of grow your own mushrooms. And very excitingly today, I saw the first tiny little mushroom starting to grow. Mm -hmm. So I think I must be doing, I must be doing okay. I'm not watering it too much. Um, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, I also, I'm quite excited that um, Caroline and possibly Gloria, who Caroline lives with, um, 
have made this week's Japanese pancakes from the Oddbox newsletter. I often do make their recipes. I haven't made the Japanese pancake, um, but yeah, how, how was it? I want to know how it was. How did it taste? Is that the okonomiyaki? Yes, I think so. Yeah, I think that's- That must be quite labor intensive, sort of like going, right, we're packing these boxes. We need to find a recipe that we yeah. can send out. They seem to have quite a big staff because with every newsletter you also get, they interview, well, interview, they just have a little paragraph from somebody who works for them. Uh -huh. I mean, all the time that I've been getting the odd box, I don't think there's been a repeat person. Oh, um, gosh. There are quite a few people. I thought it was a small operation, but yeah. But you're right. There must be somebody sourcing recipes or trying to come up with recipes. Uh, and they're quite, they're good. I mean, and, uh, yeah, they have to be relevant to the produce that you're going to get. And also not everybody's getting exactly the same produce because there's different options for which box oh, yeah. you can get. Uh, so sometimes they talk about people getting something and you know, why didn't why didn't I get any cherries? <laughs> um, well, but, um, I want to I want to ask, since you're asking questions of our audience, I want to know what your favorite bits were. <gasps> yes. Anyone who's watched more than this week, what did um, you enjoy? I remember you talking about Who's the guy who runs the poetry podcast? Yeah, oh, David Turner. But that's stopped now. Oh, Luna Podcasts. Luna Poetry Podcast. They did their last episode. I think it went out this week. It's a really good episode. I recommend it. Mm -hmm. Why is it good? It, it's talking about uh, access and, well, it's talking about poetry, first of all, obviously, because it's an interview with a poet, Stephen Lightbaum, who lives in Bristol, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and they talk about access to poetry access to poetry nights um and uh they and then they talk a little bit about what like what is happening um in lockdown with you know all of the stuff that's now on zoom what difference does that make and what effect does that make and Stephen Lightbaum um I hope I'm pronouncing his name right uh, so he's in a wheelchair and so he has a lot of obviously a lot of frustration and a lot of issues with poetry venues because they're often they're just not accessible. They're either yeah. upstairs or downstairs. And then even when you're there, if you're reading, you can't get onto the stage, for example. Um, and so he's been a bit frustrated, as have a lot of people, I think, at the speed at which venues have suddenly realized that everything can go up online. Right. Um, but he's all, he also said something really interesting, which was um, that it's also really important to be able to access the social space. If you're a, if you're a poet and you're writing, you want to also be meeting people yeah. and sharing knowledge that way. So if you're just performing on Zoom, although that means that gigs are now quite accessible to people who, who are comfortable using Zoom and you can uh -huh. perform all over the world, you, you finish your bit and you switch off your, you know, you switch off and that's it. Then you're there alone and you don't get that, um, that exchange of just, you know, knowledge and conversation and all of those other things that you get at gigs. Anyway, they, they obviously in the episode, it's discussed much more intelligently and interestingly. But so I recommend that. I, they, it, yeah, it had, they had some really interesting thoughts. How do you feel about performing on Zoom? I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> I love, I, I don't mind having this conversation because uh -huh. um, chatting seems fine, but I don't like not seeing the audience. Uh -huh. um, and I also don't feel, I mean, I do it sitting down, which is perhaps a mistake. Um, I was watching some improv that you were doing and some of the performers are standing up and I thought, oh, okay, that might be a more interesting way of doing it. Um, oh, what's her name? Uh, oh, her name's gone out of my head. Who I, the woman I know. Monica. No, not Monica. Um, Francesca. Or Francesca. Um, we used to meet in Brixton at the Bricklayers, I think the Bricklayers Arms. Anyway, you used um, to meet what my friend John Joe used to run uh oh so she um, used to gig there she used to gig there he started to program us separately which was annoying but um she was part of this improvised musical group she was amazing she uh, yeah Dreamweaver big love for it? Francesca what's her surname so bad memory Francesca Is anyway she's got three Francesca Renee Reed, Reed. Yeah, Francesca Reed. Okay, anyway, she was standing up, I think. I had the impression that she was anyway. Oh, she was yeah. Doing I'm doing. Yeah, but it's really hard to find. I've bought so much equipment for right. online stuff. Like, what would I, 
you'd have to have a standing desk or yeah. an iPad yeah. on a tripod, but you can't, there's some mm -hmm. Zoom functionality that you can't get on an iPad. Right, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and I would like to, if this, if anyone out there is thinking of getting an iPad, I recently got my first one and it's so hard to use because it's not like a laptop at all, uh -huh. it's a phone. Oh, really? It's okay. a big phone, right? And so you can't open um, tabs the same way. Okay. Yeah. Um, at least I don't think so. Anyway, I'm finding it really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you, can you have, so I'm assuming you can't have two things up. You could like, cause on my computer, I can shrink something and then put something oh, next to it. I haven't even tried. I mean, it's very useful. It's really nice to like write on. Okay. But, you know, that's a very expensive paper. <laughs> um, yes. Um, what, what was your favourite word from the season, Vera? Oh, I didn't see that question. It's oh, new. God. Okay. Word. I'm pleased that the pancake was yummy, by the way. I don't know. I don't remember words. Your vocabulary is much more extensive than mine. I wonder what my favourite word was. I don't know either. Um, I'm not, no, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't remember, but that's a good question. I like it. Colin Bartlett has volunteered a joke. At first I thought it was an anecdote and then I read it a few times and I was like, oh, it's a joke. And I'm not going to read it out loud because it's to do with, how would you say? It's to do with um, bat phobia, no? Well, yes, I, it's kind of, it's like a, it's a complex, <laughs> it's, it's like a complex normally, joke. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, I don't know. Um, but it, it's, it's clever, but it's, yeah, I've been thinking a lot. So what thing we discussed was the nature of comedy and like punching up, punching down, punching sideways, yeah. um, you know, and that sort of pre supposes that there's a hierarchy of yeah. people and we're always sort of going, mm. it's not, it's not oppression Olympics. So it's very difficult to mm. go uh, punch up, punch down. And also, like you said, there is a, the objection of, oh, if you, if you place, if you as a comedian place yourself as inferior or yeah. have a flaw, you can immediately start punching everybody and that's right. not fair. No, no, exactly. Um, yes. I think, yeah, there's something intangible that is to do with how whatever you're saying will be received by people in the audience. Like um, how, yeah, whether or not people will feel attacked or isolated or do you know what I mean because um, there's a feeling that I've definitely had in rooms in comedy rooms where you feel like oh now everybody's laughing at me um, they don't know me they don't know who I am but mm -hmm. I now feel that everybody is laughing at me because the punchline of the joke involves somebody who I identify with um, and so I think that's something that is it's difficult to always put your finger on but I think it's a it's a good test. Will somebody in the audience be having this experience if I tell this joke or say this thing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I, I, it's probably impossible to know, but it's, I feel like it's another thing that's just worth asking, having as a question. Yes, yes. I am so interested in doing stand up or doing more comedy whenever that's possible again. And mm. It is very difficult to do it on Zoom because you can't see the audience. Yeah, um, yeah. But on that note, we have a fabulous cheese drink yes. from Gloria Sanders. Um, oh, can I say before you say the joke, yes. I just say I'm going to put a link in, well, if I can find it. Alistair Beckett King did a really nice video that I saw on Twitter. Yes. Talk basically like around the subject of stand up on, on social media. In, oh, like, please, uh, yes. I will include it. It's a skit, but it's really nice. It's really nice. Right. I think he makes really nice stuff. Anyway, yeah, please read the so joke. Should I do it? Because I definitely can't do the accent. So I'm well, me gonna, neither. Yes. Um, have you, Adrian, have you heard about the Yorkshireman 
cheese. <laughs> Have you heard about the Yorkshire man cheese who didn't read that much to his wife any longer? No, I haven't heard about the Yorkshire man cheese who didn't read that much to his wife any longer. He read Leicester. <laughs> How would you, what's a Yorkshire accent? I don't know. <laughs> I can't do accents. I'm not sure. No, I can't even Im imagine the Yorkshire <laughs> accent into my brain. But um, it's now 15 past eight and we Thank are so again. Thank you for that joke. Thank you so much for Both that joke. Both parts of that joke were worth it. I mean, it, you know, it's not a joke that I needed to wait for the punchline. To, <laughs> to enjoy, it's exactly. Funny. It was an enjoyable, enjoyable in the first all the way time. through. Yes. Um, so <laughs> we won't be seeing you live through August, but we might be able to do a little something something. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Um, but I want to thank Adrian, my co-host. I want to thank Marie and the team at Omnibus Theatre who have been supporting independent artists through this difficult time and continue to do so. And if you would like to support the Omnibus and the artists that they support, please donate via the link below this video. Thank you, Vera, for really making this happen. And remember that whenever anyone compliments you, you have to say, I know, yeah. right? And just enjoy that and practice that and own it. Yeah. Yay. Adrian, you've been a brilliant co-host. I know, right? <laughs> I'm not very good at it yet, uh, but I'm practicing. Yes. Mira, you have been an amazing conversational partner. I know, right? It's so hard. You all out there, you have been an amazing audience slash whatever else, whatever other word would be appropriate. Thank you so okay. much. Enjoy the summer, stay safe and stay in touch. Bye. Bye.